Hello AP Chemistry and welcome to the syllabus. Um, so obviously the expectation is that you have your syllabus out or just have a copy pulled up on your computer um, and that you will read through this as we go. Obviously it is your responsibility to read this document in its entirety and if you have any questions take note of them and bring them to class next period so that way we can address them and make sure that everybody is on the same page as we start the school year. Note that this will live in the welcome folder for the duration of the year if you ever need to refer back to it. Um, or, you know, the super diligent among you might go ahead and just download a copy and like leave it in your like chemistry folder on your desktop or however it is you organize yourselves. Anyway, um, so AP Chemistry, things to know. Um, obviously, there's my email. Here are my help times, right? Uh, those are important to know. So that way, if you have help, you can come by and get some, right? One of the things to take note of, right, is that AP Chemistry is, is obviously introductory college level chemistry. So... What that means is that even for those of you that found that sophomore chem was so easy and you never had any questions and you were just fine, right? Um, that's great. And it's quite possible that AP will be the same experience for you. You will just do your, the work you're supposed to do and you will get it and it will be fine, right? There's a strong possibility that some of you are gonna be like, oh, this is actually harder. And it's important that you get those questions answered promptly so that way they don't snowball into bigger issues, right? Because obviously chemistry is cumulative, which I've said a few times before. All right, course materials um, as listed here. And this is what I talked about uh, during our uh, meeting before the summer, right? Obviously, I hope everybody has a book already, right? Um, everybody has a calculator, calculator already. Um, binder, um, I cannot recommend enough that a binder is gonna be helpful because obviously, uh, you know, chemistry is cumulative, right? And everything that you store up over the course of the school year is what you're going to use at the end of the school year to review for the AP Chem exam, right? So the better organized that is, the better off you'll be. Um, I do recommend nine plus dividers because what will happen is in the ideal scenario, you organize your binder by chapters or by units actually, right? Um, and then each unit, right, will have um, like the same, you know, repeating set of work, right? Just like it was last year, right? Um, but just that that will help you keep organized in terms of studying later, right? Um, the spiral notebook is useful just to do your web assigned homeworks, right? Um, that is the same uh same thing you use for your summer homework. That's what we we'll use for our homeworks all year. Um, and having an easy place to keep your work for that organized um, is just nice to have, right? Um, but that's totally up to you. If you want to do it on loose leaf paper and shove it into your binder, that's cool too. Um, and obviously the subscription to WebAssign. Um, AP Chemistry Review Book, I say that you might want to, and that just sort of depends on how you like to study. And, um, and for some of you guys, it'll be like an evolving of how you study during the course of the school year to find the thing that's going to work for you, okay? Um, the only reason a person might want two is that you might want one for the beginning of the school year that is going to be organized by chapters, right? Organized by our chapters. So our BLB chapters, right? And BLB, that's our book, Brown, LeMay, Burston, I think it is, right? Um, so one that's organized by our BLB chapters, right? And then at some point when we get to our um, AP review, you would prefer one organized by uh, our CB units, okay? Um, just like last year, you will need some clothes to choose for every lab. So if you wanna leave some in your locker, that's great. Um, just make sure you plan ahead. If you don't have closed-toed shoes, that is considered a safety infraction. Um, I will provide safety goggles, apron, and gloves on an as-needed basis. Um, goggles always, the rest of them as needed. All right, why study AP Chemistry? I feel like the obvious, the reasons are obvious because it's amazing, it's awesome, it's fascinating. All the life things you should know um, and some other reasons also, right? Um, what makes AP different, right? So note that we do meet five periods a week, right? So we've got third and fourth, and we've got ALAP, and we've got F1, and this is on D-Days, okay? Um, which means that you both, both sections will have their double period on the same day. And it does take priority over anything else that might be happening during that time. Okay, um, obviously it's faster, it's harder, right? And there's homework every day. I said last year that there's homework every day and it's quite possible that some of you guys managed to do very, very well without having to actually do chemistry every day. This year you'll find that um, the chunks are bigger 
and the chunks are denser, right? Um, so the the more you can split that up, the better off you'll be. Okay. So, I mean, let's just, let's, let's just play that out. Right. So let's say that it's a one to two hours a day. Let's say that you took three days off, right? You've already saved yourself three to six hours of homework. If you try to do it in one big chunk, it's going to take you longer, right? Because you're going to need to pause more often, right? Because it's not all going to sink in, which means you're going to have to spend more time reviewing it later than you would otherwise, right? In addition, it's not going to stick as well because most brains aren't made to absorb chunks that big. Um, and so, and, and then you miss out on the layering effect, right? About Because chemistry's killing whatever, right? Um, there would be the layering if you did it a little bit every day, right? So you are missing out on all of those things, which means that six hours in one chunk is not as effective as if it were spread out over um, several days, right? So please keep that in mind and try to think about that. Um, and obviously lots of independence. Um, so responsibility and organization, organization are key. I, I assume that won't be a problem. All right. Topics. So a lot of what we do is review, right? There are a lot of things that we touched on last year that this year we just do a deeper dive into, right? Things that are assumed, right? Like, so for example, like your ability to like do a conversion, right? We're not going to review that at all because I just assume you can do that now, right? Um, if you feel like maybe you're a little fuzzy, right? Come see me and we can talk about it, right? But, um, and for any review topic, right? So for a lot of our review topics, I am going to move really quickly through them. If you find that you're a little bit fuzzy, that's one of that one of those things where you take note of your questions and come by during a help time or during an in-class uh, work time, come and ask questions. All right, obviously the whole goal of taking this class is that you'll do well on the AP exam to either place out of your laboratory science when you get to college, right? There are always some of you guys that want to do that, right? Or if you think that you might want to major in a physical science, right? What it's going to do is it's not necessarily about skipping out of your gen chem when you get to college, right? But it's about making sure that you have the foundation that you need to ace gen chem when you get to college, right? Which is going to ease your transition into the rest of your much harder classes when you get there, right? Um, so in order to do that, right, in order to help you be successful, it is important that we practice how it's going to actually be, right? So all of your tests will be structured like little tiny AP exams, right? Which means that by the time you get to our semester exam and the actual AP exam, you will, nothing will be a surprise, right? Um, which is a good thing, right? You, you may not believe me for the first, you know, for first few units, uh, but it's a good thing. All right, uh, next page. Uh, how to learn chemistry. This should be like a duh thing at this point because you guys have already had some, right? But uh, do some every day. That's going to be helpful. Um, see me for help and study groups, right? Even if you didn't do that last year because you may not have needed to, sometimes it is helpful to have somebody to study with, especially when you get to the review stage, right? So not necessarily on the front end of a unit, right? But on the back end, as you guys are approaching the test, it might be helpful to have people to talk up to about the chemistry um, just to help cement the topics, right? Uh, to point out the things where you're, stif you're still fuzzier than you realized, right? But you don't know until you talk about it, right? Um, grades, uh, you will have tests, homework, and labs. Note that it's 50% tests, 30% homework, and 20% labs. Um, late work policy is the same as last year, where some work will be accepted late, bonus, extra credit, and web assigns will never be accepted late. The beauty of web assign is that you can see your score as you go, which you should know that by now, um, which means that, um, you know, if you are, everybody has those moments, right? And every once in a while, it means that for you, your personal choice may have to be that you get it up to an 80% and once or twice during the year, you just have to leave it there, right? Um, and, you know, and obviously, you know, if if you feel like you have some extenuating circumstances, talk to me and uh, we will discuss that. Uh, please note, I do not give extra credit to individuals, so please don't come at the end of the semester or the quarter with sad face uh, because, as you know from last year, I give bonus opportunities all year um, and it's your uh it's on you to take advantage of them as they come, right? Make sure you have your device, make sure you have your charger. Um, you guys should already know that your laptop isn't gonna be useful for notes, but you guys should already know that. Okay, um, attendance policy, obviously, please come to school and try not to miss school. Um, if you must be absent on the day of a quiz or a test, you'll take it the day you return to school, otherwise a late penalty will apply, right? If you have planned excused absences, right, you should do what you can before, 
and uh, see me before so we can work out a schedule, otherwise late penalty, right? If you are ill, see me the moment you return so we can make out a schedule. Um, if you're absent on the day of a lab, you just won't get a grade for that lab, but you're still responsible for that material, right? So um, you would, I strongly recommend you get notes from at least two other people so that way you get at least two perspectives, right? Because the problem with the lab is that um, unless you're sure that somebody's notes are of excellent quality, um, you might be missing stuff, okay? And then see me for questions, right? Honorable expectations, right? Um, these are things that would constitute an honor code violation. So tests are obviously independent, always, no exceptions. Um, web assign assignments are also independent, no exceptions, right? Web assigns are like our first, um, our first layer, right? You've read it, you've watched the lectures, and web assigns are where you practice, right? Your first practice. WebAssign is a low stakes opportunity for you to master the basic skills before you move on to the more advanced work where you are allowed to work in a small group um, because you have to have skills to bring to the group work, right? Does that make sense? I hope so. Multiple choice practice assessments, which are online. Um, we'll talk more about that later, but basically those are bonus assignments that I give you guys on Schoology that you may complete with a singular partner, right? If you would like, as with all things in chemistry, each person should contribute to each question um, and every person should have a record of the work for each question. Um, you can use books, notes, and Schoology. You may not search the internet. Um, and if I suspect violations, I'll just get rid of those assessments, right? Um, which would be unfortunate because they're bonus. EP packets, which are uh, basically um, sets of free responses for each unit. You may work in small groups. Again, each member should contribute to each question and every member should have a record of their work, right? You can use books, notes, and Schoology. You may not search the internet, right? If I suspect violations, it will become an independent thing, right? Note that here for those free response packets, right? That's our lead up to the test, okay? So what that means is that if you bring me an EP, right, which is graded, right, if you bring me that and you do very well on that, that should translate into doing very well on the test, right? I mean, there's the rare exception, right? Or you're just having a bad day on test day, whatever, right? Or you've had like a bad night, right? Everybody has that one rare exception. But if it becomes a trend that you are turning in an excellent EP and you have terrible test scores, we're going to have to have a a discussion about whether or not your EPs are reflecting your actual work, or perhaps it's an honor code violation, right? Um, so, you know, bear that in mind, right? And they are meant to be done in small groups. So think about that too, right? Lab activities, pre and post lab activities, you can do with your lab members, same basic thing, right? Um, where everybody contributes to every question, right? If you happen to have a tutor, note that they may not help on graded assignments, right? Um, and if you are wondering what you may work on or you're trying to find something like very specific to work on, right? Come see me, right? And I can help you pick out some things that would be helpful for you if that applies, okay? Um, in terms of our outline for the year, uh, here are the units that we are going to do, right? So this is the unit, right? And these are the chapters from our book that the unit uh, is made of. Um, special things to take note of, right? Uh, we will do four units and then we will do a full length practice exam. That's like our diagnostic where we see where we're sitting at the end of the first semester. Then we will spend some time reviewing and then you'll do the actual semester exam. Then we'll do uh, our last few units. And note that um, the number of chapters, right? So literal book chapters from semester one is much bigger than from semester two, right? Part of that is I want to spend a lot of time on review, right? And part of it is that a lot of these semester one topics are review. And so like I said, we will run through them a little bit faster, okay? Which again means the responsibility is on you for if things are fuzzy to see me, okay? And at the end of the year, you'll see that we do another full length practice exam. If all goes well, we should get four weeks of review. So again, plenty. You'll take another full length exam before you actually sit for the AP exam. So again, the course is structured so that way you get enough experience, exposure, practice. So by the time you sit down for the exam in May, you are confident, you are prepared, and you know, good things will happen. All right, uh, again, take note of anything that's fuzzy. 
take note of anything you have questions about, bring those to class and ask them when we get there. All right. Thank you for listening. Be good. I look forward to an awesome year. Bye guys.